live. Hey, what's up? Jared Dog here, 4.20 p.m. And this is when I go live on Facebook, reaching out to you, my good friend. Uh, so, I hope you're having a good Tuesday. It's July 11th. 7-Eleven, baby. 7-Eleven changed everything. We'll never forget. This week, coming up, uh, we got show dates in South Dakota, Illinois, and Iowa. On Thursday, I'll be in Bruce, South Dakota, at the J Street Pub. Fucking town is awesome, man. Bruce, South Dakota. It's really small. It's really tiny. Town is like maybe two blocks total. But uh, the people there are so cool. It's like all the coolest people just found this one little town in South Dakota where the cops won't bother them. And they can pretty much just do whatever they want and have a good time and nobody bothers anybody. At least that's been my experience all two nights that I've visited. So I'm looking forward to that. J Street Pub this Thursday in Bruce, South Dakota. Thank you, everybody, for chiming in. Uh, hit the share button. Hit the like button. Hit the laugh button. Hit all the buttons. Hit the angry button. I don't give a shit. Maybe something I'll say will piss you off. Let me know that, too. I don't care. I'm just talking my shit every day at 420. This is kind of my way of developing new material for the show. I rant and rave about all the fucking shit that pisses me off and gets under my skin day in and day out. Sometimes it comes off like a major bitch fest, and a lot of times that's probably exactly what it is. But then the next day, I rewatch this, uh, I watch the replay, and I extract material out of it. I take notes, and that stuff becomes jokes for shows later on. So, looking forward to doing some of that stuff this weekend. Oh, the other two shows. Trayer, uh, Iowa, this Friday, being my home state of Iowa. We got any Iowa people there watching? Russell Danley, hey buddy. Good old Uncle Russ tuning in every day. You're gonna be, Dan you're gonna be, you're like a wake and bake. Or this isn't a wake and bake. 420. That wake and bake's the thing I used to do on the radio. You're gonna be a 420 report regular. Anyway, I'll be in Trayer, Iowa, this Friday at the Wind Up Lounge. It's gonna be my first appearance there, so I don't really know what to expect. But it sounds pretty cool. Everybody there sounds like uh, they're pretty excited to have the show. Um, I think it's their first comedy night ever as well, so we'll see what happens. I'll definitely bring the video camera. If nothing else, we'll get good footage for YouTube. And then Saturday, I go to Linden, Illinois, uh, Bushy's Bar. And that's another time, another place where they're having comedy for the first time. So looking forward to that, man. We're going to have some new friends and some new fans out there. And I want to thank all you guys for hitting me up every day at 4.20 p.m. while I shoot off my mouth yak them up yak it up uh who else is on there a lot of people hey darlene all the way from crystal michigan we had a great time last weekend uh the comedy show was a lot of fun i brought a couple of extra comedians with me and then scott long got up there to headline the show and it was a nice little very enthusiastic intimate audience they always treat us right there the Uptown Bar and Cafe in Crystal, Michigan. It's a real small town right on Crystal Lake. Uh, they get around by golf carts. You know, of course, they make fun of that, and I think pretty much every other comedian does as well. Uh, after the show, though, I went down to this other bar down the street, and that's what I was talking about yesterday. Two people rolled in off of a boat. I look one way, yakking it up, telling some jokes, talking my shit. Look this way. People are getting off the boat. All of a sudden, four or five dudes are all on the ground on top of each other, full-on WWE Battle Royal. So that was a lot of fun. That was exciting, you know. Anyway, we had a good time there in Crystal Lake. Thanks, Darlene, for checking it out. Hey, what's up? Matt Jansen, alias. It's 420. That's right, it's 420. I can't watch fucking bullshit. Goddamn piece of headphone shit. Yeah, I think you might need to upgrade your phone. Of course, the Russians might be hacking into the feed again. It's been known to happen before. And I don't know. I don't know if this stuff is coming off uh, with decent signal or not. From my end, I don't get all the weird shit. It looks like a 
picture perfect crystal clear signal you know I look handsome as hell like I usually do but I don't know what is coming across on your end is it everybody can everybody see okay are you sure the group of guys weren't involved in the game <laughs> Well, uh, if it was, it was pretty violent. It was pretty violent. And if that's what gay orgies are all about, then I am definitely against gay sex. Because that was some, you know, getting punched in the face is not my idea of a good time. Not my idea of an orgy. An orgy of violence, maybe. Uh, an orgy of drunken bullshit. But bar shows are my favorite shows to do. What did Luke Deck wrote, wrote to me yesterday about bar crowds? When you work a happy bar crowd, describe your thought processes in choosing which bits, jokes, and other hunks, and how you vary intensity and ride the laugh waves. Do you feel stronger varying your set than doing a set list? Yeah, that's the good question. A lot of comics roll in to a one-nighter, that serves as a bar and grill, a sports bar, a neighborhood bar, whatever, beer and shot type place with a jukebox in the corner. And they're kind of expecting that crowd to behave like a crowd might behave at the improv or the funny bone or a mainstream comedy club where the audience has been trained and it's the perfect environment and setup and situation for a comedy. From the performer's perspective, a lot of times though I go to these comedy clubs and it is not necessarily the ideal performance situation. I mean, for a comedian, maybe, maybe, but I was talking with, about this with the guys this last weekend. Sometimes the stage is at a weird level and the people are jammed right, like literally right to the edge of the fucking stage or pretty much they can put the drink on it as though it's a cocktail table and my dick is in their face. That's not comfortable to watch. I've been in the front row of comedy shows before and I'm not the kind of guy that backs down from sitting in the front row because I'm afraid I'll get picked on. That's, a, that's so weird too. I mean, I understand where people get that idea, but you don't get picked on just because you sit in the front row. You get picked on if you make an asshole out of yourself. Anyway, um, I'm not afraid of getting picked on. I'll sit in the front row of the fucking comedy show, but it is very weird when you're sitting there and you kind of look up like this the entire time at the comedian. That's not comfortable. So I don't think a lot of comedy clubs are actually set up that for the most conducive uh, atmosphere for comedy either. I think a lot of times they're jammed in like sardines. Budweiser's are $9 a fucking can, you know? So I think a lot of times bars are the best places for comedy is just that comedians need to learn what to expect those are regulars in there those are your average Joe just trying to get through their fucking day blue-collar workers they've got regular old problems they're in there day in and day out sometimes they're just in there for the one night of the month that they got a few bucks set aside to take their wife out on a date night you know they're not they maybe they're they, they're not even expecting a comedy night there are a lot of different dynamics at play in a bar and nightclub, which makes it a more challenging performance situation, but in my opinion, a lot more fun as well, because you have to be open and tuned in to the environment. So no, I don't go up with a set list at all. I don't go up with any kind of preparation, because the only thing you should expect out of a bar, a bar crowd is expect the unexpected. Anything can fucking happen. It is not really a controlled environment whatsoever. Like the folks in Crystal Lake last weekend, they've been having comedy nights once a month for like the last year and a half. And the audience and the people there are very cool. They're very well behaved. There's very little bullshit. But the most exciting parts of the show are when like guys like this dude named Elmer, who just randomly was heckling me from the lounge uh, in the room next door where the actual bar bar was the show takes place in the little banquet room next to the bar and you know some lady comes she's like yeah Elmer says Jared Dog's not funny I brought him up on stage we took our shirts off we had a fucking pose down you know to me that's the best kind of stuff that you don't necessarily get that out of a sterile 
an uh, environment like a comedy club where someone starts talking that shit out in the bar at the club, they get escorted out. And probably they should be because most comedians are not going to be willing to fucking just go off the set list, take off their shirt, and do a pose down with the fucking local old drunk. But Jared Dog is. That's my favorite part of the show where I get to mix it up, do something completely different than what I normally would, something unexpected. Expect the unexpected. I don't go up with a set list. I used to. I used to have to. I used to only have so much material, and if I fucking forgot it, I was fucked. Now I go up with the idea to just be free and open and in the moment and having a great time. I got this actually from reading a book called The Peaceful Warrior and another book called... Um, it's called Zen, Punk Rock, and Monster Movies, or something like that. But basically, it's, it's basically about Zen philosophy, where you just want to be in the moment, open and tuned into the present, where anything can happen, and then doing the best possible effort that you can do in that moment. Not thinking about the past, not worrying about past bullshit mistakes that you might have made, not getting outcome dependent on some future result. Just right there in the moment while I'm on stage, I try to make every joke about the joke. Every little bit about the bit. Every heckler interaction about that heckler interaction, yet still controlling the dynamic and the flow, still being able to... Uh, keep the crowd interested and engaged. It's not that hard when you're just willing to share and speak openly and honestly from the heart and have a fucking sense of humor. I could go on about this all day long, but I don't know if it's interesting to you guys or not. We have comedy fans on. We have comedy nerds watching. We have venue owners watching. We have uh, comedians watching. So, again, I just talk shit off the top of my head and see what sticks. Fucking phone works all day. Randy said something. Randy from Boxcars Pogo wants you to do the disappearing Jaeger bomb trick. <laughs> all right, how about this? I'll do the disappearing Jaeger bomb trick tomorrow for the Wednesday 420 report when it is hump day happy hour. And that will be dedicated to my good friend Tim Pogorowski up there at Boxcars Pub and Grub in Clinton, Wisconsin. Another fucking kick-ass place that brings comedy in on a monthly basis. And they've been doing that for like four or five years. They take a break in the summertime. A lot of people out there vacationing. They're doing all kinds of crazy shit in the summertime. And it can be a little bit challenging to bring in a comedy audience. But when they start it with uh, the Grassroots Comedy Tour Series, October through April, every show is pretty much a sellout, if I'm getting that correct. I think they've had a, like maybe five empty seats, grand total, in the entire history of doing comedy shows at Boxcars in Clinton. So shout out to you guys, and I will do the disappearing Jaeger bomb trick tomorrow for the 420 report. Since it's Wednesday, it'll be hump day happy hour. Who else is on? Bob LaFada. Yeah, man. Hey, Bob. Love Zen. Yeah, dude, we should probably get together and hang more often. I was just thinking about that when I was driving back from Michigan last week. I went through Gary, and I'm just in the habit of, like, driving through Gary, Indiana as fast as humanly fucking possible. I forget. I've got a really good friend there I need to hook up with every once in a while. So the next time I'm driving through, I've got a trip coming up, to, a bunch of trips coming up to Michigan here in August. So uh, we got to make it happen, brother. Maureen Tice from the e another Eagles Club. Eagles Club is another great place where you can go off the hook. And here's something that I have been pleasantly surprised with, with these Eagles Clubs, like Bob at the Eagles Club in Gary, Maureen at the Eagles Club in Azusa. Shout out to you guys. Give me some likes. You know, if you're still watching, hit the share button. Let the people there know what Jaredog is all about. Um... But here's what I've noticed about these Eagles clubs is that they're another, it's surprisingly very cool, engaged audiences. When I first started getting booked by fraternal organizations, there was a big concern about the content of the show. Is it going to be offensive? We have older people here tonight, and we don't want them to be offended. And I found that some of these old fuckers in their 60s and 70s, it makes sense when you think about it, that today's senior citizens were yesterday's hippies, 
they're, the dirtier and crazier and raunchier it is, the harder they're fucking laughing. It's the craziest shit. I saw this, there, there was, I was in South Haven, Michigan last week, and the crowd were a lot of retirees, I would guess. I'm just guessing. I'm completely stereotyping. But, you know, silver hair, gray beards, deck shorts, deck shoes. You know, they were, they were tourists, tourists from Chicago, the type of people that have a boat to keep it up, docked up in South Haven, Michigan, that come up for the weekends. Uh, conservative, very conservative. You would guess, right? But I just did the standard old Jerdog shit, speaking open, like I said, openly and honestly, no regard for other, other than doing the best possible joke in the moment and being completely unstifled and riffing off the dome. And this, you know, people were into it, having a great, great set afterwards, uh, hanging out with this couple. And the wife goes, I was, I looked, she goes, oh, she goes, number one, uh, I thought you were going to be black. Like, what are you talking about? She goes, your name's Jerdog. I was, I thought you were going to be black. I was kind of disappointed. <laughs> so that's number one. I'm like, what are you, racist? Like, only black dudes can have the word dog in their name? Anyway, so, so and she was talking further, and she goes, I noticed that some of those seniors over there, the, the raunch you, you got, the more they laughed. I'm like, yeah, of course they did. Who, I don't, whatever age you are, you either have a sense of humor or you don't. It's not about being clean or dirty. It's just whether it's fucking funny or not. You know, people with a sense of humor are going to go to a comedy night. They're going to go to a comedy club. If you're fucking funny, whether you use curse words or not, they're going to laugh. That's how I get it done anyway. That's how I, a lot of working road pros get it done is they do their thing unfiltered. I think that's the best form of comedy, not stilted bullshit where you start to make assumptions about the audience based on what they look like. I'm like, Jesus, lady, you think because they're seniors, they're retired, that they're not going to laugh? What are you, fucking ageist? So you're a racist and an ageist. If my name was Dog, you thought that I was going to be black, and because they were retirees, you thought they were going to be uptight. Racist and an ageist. I don't fucking play that shit. I just assume that everybody's there to have a good time. And maybe not. Maybe you'll disagree with the point of view I have. Maybe you'll think that some of the jokes that I do are tasteless or over the top or out of line. That's fine, too. There's room for everybody. Save your money. Don't come to see Jared Dog next time. Save your fucking money and go to the Jeff Dunham concert. It's as easy as that. What else do I got to talk about? That's pretty much it, man. I'm getting dry mouth. I'm yakking it up. Come see me this Thursday in Bruce, South Dakota. If I got any South Dakota people watching right now, Bruce... Small town up there by Dickinson, isn't it? I don't know. Off the top of my head. I'll have to look it up. Off the map quest it. I've been there, but I just can't remember where it is. But it's the J Street Pub. Come see me. Tickets are on sale now. Uh, come see me this Friday. Iowa peeps. I'll be in Trayer at the Wind Up Lounge. And I know I got fans and friends in Illinois. So you should come hit me up in Linden, Bushy's Bar. And those are going to be two wild nights bar and grill type shows, crazy audiences. I'll just be, like I said, living it up, playing it in the moment, not going off a set list, varying up the show depending on what the fuck happens in the moment. A waitress drops a tray of drinks. Some old dude wants to challenge me to a pose down. I'm up for it. <laughs> uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, 420 report. Hump day happy hour, and just for pogos, I'll be doing the disappearing Jaeger bomb trick. Been going on for over 18 minutes now. Thank you guys for checking it out. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you, Tricia. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Uncle Russ. Uh, we'll see you all again tomorrow at 420.